What's up, I'm Gemma, and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to walk you through the testing solution that I set up for the Ebo API. The one thing that allows me to sleep at night is knowing that I have tons of tests that are continuously running against any change that I make or any other developer makes to the project. So I wanted to quickly walk through what the testing environment looks like for this project. So the methodology that I've been using for testing and creating tests is TED, which is Test Driven Development. Test-driven development is basically the concept that you create tests as early as possible to inform the development process. If you're following TDD, you probably have to ask a lot of preliminary questions before you jump into development, like what are some of the parameters that are expected to be consumed by this endpoint and what is the response body supposed to look like? If you're able to answer those questions and able to write tests before you even start developing, then when you start going down the development path, Anytime you have an error or some unexpected result, your tests will automatically start catching that as you're developing. So the great thing about TDD is that it forces you to fully understand what your end product should look like before you start developing it. So if I'm going to be honest, I can't do that for every single feature that I'm expected to create because a lot of times, a lot of tickets or tasks are very up in the air. You have to kind of define the requirements as you're developing it. So instead of me trying to figure out exactly some concrete requirements that I need to complete while developing in order to write a test before I start developing, I just start developing and then once I'm happy with the state of my feature, that's when I insist on going into a testing file and writing a test or a couple of tests for that new feature that I just created. So for the Ebo API project, I'm going to show you a couple of the files that I've written out and walk you through the thought process for each of these tests. So inside of Vivo API, there's a test directory that contains a lot of different test files. As the project has been maturing, more test files have been introduced into the project and naming convention isn't as consistent, but the most important thing about tests is that you actually have tests. So let's say that we go into API Mongo test. The whole purpose of this test file is to test all of the word collection documents that exist inside of our database. So inside of MongoDB, there's different collections like the word collection, the example collection, word suggestion, example suggestion collections, or even the generic word collection. So inside of API Mongo test, we're testing against the word collection. So at the top of the file, I'm importing Chai, which is the testing framework that I'm using to help streamline the whole testing process. And then right below, I'm importing a lot more dependencies like Mongoose, a couple of Lodash utility functions, some constants, mock data, and more. Everything inside of this describe block is going to be running tests against the word collection. So before all my tests even run, I'm calling a function called populate API, which is responsible for populating my testing database with all of the word documents and example documents necessary for these tests to run. In my last video, I talked about how I created the populate endpoint in order to populate databases, whether it's in a development environment or a testing environment. Within this describe block, I have four more describe blocks, which are supposed to be subsections for tests. Each describe block inside of the main describe block has a certain theme that needs to be followed for each of the subsequent tests. So for the first describe block, we have MongoDB collection, which is pretty old and probably needs to be refactored. But the whole point of this describe block is just to test to see if Mongoose as a package works. So basically what we're doing is we're creating a new Word document and we're just saving it and making sure that we're passing in validated or correct information and that we're not throwing errors. This is more to test the Mongoose package, which might not be even required since Mongoose probably has its own internal tests. But I always think if the test runs, if it passes, it doesn't hurt to keep it. The second describe block is responsible for testing all of the post requests to our API. So inside of this post MongoDB words block, we have three tests that are basically testing to see if we are successfully able to create a new word in the database, to see if our database will successfully throw errors if we are passed in some malformed data, and if we are able to return newly created words by searching for those words using a keyword. The next describe block is testing all of our put endpoints. So we're testing to see if we're able to update existing words. And there's only one test for this since there's only one put endpoint. And then lastly, we have our largest describe block, which is testing all the logic present within the get MongoDB words route. So inside here, we have a ton of it tests, but they're checking a variety of different things. 
Since the API is very lenient in terms of how you can search for information, in terms of being able to search with Evo or English or with or without diacritic marks, or even being able to filter or sort your results, there is a lot of tests that need to be created to ensure that this functionality actually works. And this probably might even be a prime opportunity to refactor this and separate out a lot of these tests into smaller, more manageable files or describe blocks. But for now, we have all these tests that are running a variety of different things. This pattern will continue for every other collection that's present within the MongoDB database. We can see here that we have our examples test.js file and it's doing the same thing where it has one big describe block that contains three smaller describe blocks. If we go into example suggestion test JS, again, we have one describe block that's containing three more describe blocks. And this will go on for all of our collections. So this is all pretty nice. I can run tests and they just run and pass or fail. But I think the real value for tests come in when you implement a continuous integration solution. I think the hardest thing for developers is when they're working so quickly and they're rapidly developing, they can oftentimes forget to first of all create tests or even run the tests that already exist. And because developers have so many things to juggle, it's probably best to automate the tedious task of running tests against every single change that's been made to the database. So for the Evo API, there is a continuous integration workflow that gets triggered whenever someone opens up a new PR and pushes to that PR. So we can see that here inside of the .github directory. Inside of that directory, we have another directory called workflows that includes the integration YAML file. So this YAML file is responsible for checking out our entire repo, setting up a node version, spinning up a MongoDB database instance, and then running all of our tests that we've written inside of those test files against the most recent changes living on a pull request. So to walk through this file, we have the name integration, which is just gonna show up in GitHub as integration. And then whenever we open up a pull request or push to a pull request, we're gonna run the following set of actions. So here I just have a job called tests, which is gonna be running on Ubuntu. And then I have a strategy matrix, which is basically responsible for running the following steps against node versions 10 and 12 and MongoDB versions 4 and 4.2. So once I set up my environment along with the current node and MongoDB versions, I'm going to run the following steps. So the first step, get checkout, is going to be responsible for checking out all of my repos files and code so I can actually run my tests against them. And after that, I'm going to choose my current node version so I can be able to run my tests. After that, I'm going to start up a local instance of my MongoDB database, which I use a GitHub Actions template because that whole process was gonna be super tedious if I wanted to do it by scratch. And then lastly, I have the final step where I'm going to build and test my server. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run yarn install and then I'm gonna build my project, which is basically going to be the code that gets built and deployed to Heroku, for example. And then I'm gonna test against that built server so to make sure that my build was successful at building. And lastly, I'm gonna run Yarn Mocha, which is going to run all the tests that I defined inside of those test files. I can show you what the tests look like if I run them locally on my system. So first I have to start up a local instance of my MongoDB database, and then I'm gonna run Yarn Mocha to run all of my tests. So after around 50 seconds, you can see that 109 of all my tests are passing. So we have this integration YAML file, which is going to run whenever we have a pull request open and we update that pull request. So I actually already have a PR open, so I'm gonna force push to that PR again to re-trigger the tests to run inside of GitHub Actions. So this is the PR that I have open. If I scroll down to the bottom of this PR, you can see that GitHub is already running our integration YAML file. If I click on the details link, I can actually watch these scripts run. So you can see here that I'm running node versions 10 and 12 with MongoDB versions 4 and 4.2. And you can see here in this log that I am able to run all the separate steps that we'd find inside of the integration YAML file. So currently we're on the step of building and testing our server. 
So you can see here that I'm running yarn install first and installing the necessary packages. And then after that, I'm able to run a yarn build and then test against my build. So I'm starting up the server and then saying that I'm testing my server build and it exits out after five seconds to make sure that the build was able to spin up successfully. And after that, I spin up another instance of my projects where I'm gonna run my mocha tests. After it looks like a minute and 40 seconds of all of our tests running, all of them passed. So if we go back to the conversation tab and scroll back down to the bottom, we can see that all of our tests have passed, which allow us to be confident in merging these changes without them breaking anything. So I feel like for a lot of developers, there's this feeling or repulsion against testing, but I think testing has always been introduced as like a second thought, something that you always have to remember later down the road after you've built out the feature. But I think if you insist on writing tests as you're developing, not only will you have tests that are up to date and correctly written to test the feature that you're developing, but you have a slowly growing number of tests as your product becomes even more technically challenging or complicated. So instead of you spending months on building out a platform with no tests and then going back and trying to install hundreds of tests, you could just write tests as you develop. So when you are done with your platform or your product or whatever you're building, you already have tests that will make sure that your product is reliable, secure, and just solid. But yeah, I wanted to walk through the testing solution for this project because I feel like testing is something that's always preached to the masses that we should definitely do. But when it comes to joining a new project or starting a new project, it always ends up being an afterthought. So I wanted to walk through the testing solution that I really enjoy using. It allows me to sleep at night and it just ensures that this API is at the highest quality to my knowledge at the very least. But that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching up until this point. Uh, let me know if you want to see anything specific to this API or if you have any suggestions in terms of any features that should exist within the API, there is a GitHub link to this entire project. So you can look at the code, you can suggest any new features, you can open bug tickets, just interact with the code base in general. I'm also on Twitter where you can also send me a DM and we can talk about the API, anything JavaScript or anything in between. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.